Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. Today we're going to talk about COVID-19. Now, understand something very, very important here. I am not a scientist. I am not medically trained. I have seen a fair chunk. And so, but the real important factor here is this. I'm not the only one that's seen it. If you are lucky enough to still have parents around that are close to or a little above the 100 year mark, you can talk to them about some of what they've seen. Everything runs in cycles. It gets better, it gets worse. This is what's called on the downswing. Now there are people working in office that many of you may complain they aren't doing enough, job, enough, enough for it or they're putting gloves in that don't make any sense. This is common, okay? You may not agree with what they're doing, but you got to remember, like you, presumably, they are human as well, and most of them were elected into office or hired by the people that you elected. Now, some of you will say, well, I didn't elect that person. I voted for the other guy. Welcome to the world of, of elections. You don't always get what you're looking for. However, it was done through due process, and if you didn't take the time to vote and had the opportunity, well, that was your choice not to. Now, here's the thing. I agree that there are many laws that don't add up. Okay, and you know, but with that in mind, yes, I stumble over it, and I'm not going to edit this. This is why I call it a live recording. But I will tell you this very critical factor. The laws are there to do their best. They're working with what they've got to do their best to protect you. Now, here's the, the sad reality is this. If with the stipulations, with the guidelines that they are putting out there, if you do not follow them, you know they are going to make the, these, these suggestions into absolute laws. Now, you may feel that you're immune. Okay, it won't happen to me. I hear that so often over the years. Okay, I'm not a good example in a lot of ways because my immune system is rather extended. However, last year was a wake-up call. This said, if you're not going to follow the laws and the guidelines for yourself, okay, please follow them for other people. Okay, when they talk about crowds, the reality is this. If you're close to people, like if you're physically in proximity, what you'll find is disease spreads. We are talking about a very nasty little virus. Now, my understanding of the virus is a little different than yours, perhaps. Okay, and I may not be working on all of the absolutely current information. However, I'm working on enough of it to know that the government is doing what they can. You may not like the government, you may not like the government at all. But as I heard one person state very clearly and very accurately, you know, you want your liberties, you want your freedoms, that's great. But if you're dead, you don't have any. And if your loved ones die, you're going to be a little more concerned and pre presumably about the, about the losses you're going through instead of the, the fun that you could have had. Yes, it is boring in a lot of cases to stay at home. Okay, for me, I've been basically a recluse for the last 10 years, so it really doesn't hurt me too much on that end. Okay, now here's a positive side for me. Okay, the one place I did tend to leave my house to go to was a coffee shop. Okay, well, technically it was a restaurant. That being said, like many of the stores out there, they close temporarily. This is unfortunate for me. I don't go out there. On the plus side, I don't spend as much money there either. And rest assured, in today's world, that's kind of an important factor. So, the other re there's a couple of reasons for following what the courts have said, what the, what the government has come out and said, whether you agree with it or not. One, they are doing their best to protect as many people as possible. They are aware, they may not say it, but they are aware that closing down businesses cuts down on livelihood. 
Now, of course, here's the neat little question. If they cut down on everybody's livelihood and the government turns around and says, we're going to send you money, where do you think that money is going to come from? Okay, they have to, this is going to be a juggling match for a while. Now, from what I've seen, and again, I do not have the statistical facts that the researchers have. But my understanding is it takes roughly about three months for a, for a community to get back into a rhythm when you have a major cataclysm. And a pandemic kind of applies in this case. So you're likely looking at at least a three-month run. And yeah, there's all sorts of frightening things that go hand in hand with that. Myself, I am concerned about the financial side of things. So hold on to your money as much as you can. Don't spend it on, on whims and what have you. The other thing to keep in mind is I am obviously in the wrong profession to tell you don't help people. But I will tell you, you have to take care of the home front first. If you don't take care of the home front, you're not going to be in any position to take care of anybody else. Now, this applies to all levels of organization, all the way from the home to companies to government. Okay, and again, we could go into a sideways rant on what's being done right, what is being done wrong. Okay, however... Here's a suggestion for those of you, just a minor little sidetrack. If you're not happy with the way the government is doing things, maybe it's time to get involved in the government and see if you can have a better impact. Lord knows it's been tried by a lot of people. But when it comes to the guidelines that I've heard, your social distancing is critical. Okay. Now, the government tried doing it and just telling people stay away from each other. That did not work. So they started putting restrictions on it. And that is simply an issue of if you're not going to do it through common sense, let's see if we can legislate it. Well, the problem there is, as I've heard somebody say in the past, you cannot legislate intelligence. You cannot legislate common sense. So try this one. If, given that that a that a virus will will transfer from one body to another, if you do not touch that other body, it has a harder time getting to you. If it's got a range, in this case, the professionals have said six feet, reasonable. Whenever you go into a into a auditorium, and they're doing group work. They always tell you, put your arms out straight beside you, okay, and turn and make sure you've got that much room. That's the amount of room that you want around around you where it comes to the social distancing side. Now, I heard of one case where somebody flat out refused, okay, and they knew they were infected. In their case, they ended up being arrested and isolated. My understanding is they are now in an isolated location. Okay, because they are locked down, so they cannot get out. Because they literally, from my understanding, they literally said, I don't care that I've got COVID, I want to go out. Well, again, if you don't care about you, do your best to care about the people around you. Okay, just remember, they are somebody's family and somebody's friend. Now, this whole thing, regardless of where it came from, people are pointing fingers in all sorts of places. This is a wake-up call. COVID-19 is to get everybody working on the same page. Regardless of where you're from, this, this illness, COVID-19, does not care how much money you've got, doesn't care who you vote for, could care less what your nationality is. And sad to say, people, or good to say, depending on how you look at it, you're all, the greater majority of you are all the same race. You're different nationalities, you've got different backgrounds, but you're all human. This virus is attacking humans. Okay, so no, your, your money will not help, your attitude will not help. Okay, I heard, I heard, and I call it a rumor, I heard somebody mention that some of the prisoners were wanting released. 
so that they could avoid getting in, being in close proximity. Well, this is one of the side effects of doing things wrong that go against the law. Now, I don't agree with every law, but I do agree with this. If you choose not to follow the laws, if you choose not to follow governmental guidelines, then you're choosing to have a problem. Now, my hat does go off, and in all fairness, I don't wear a hat very often, but my hat does go off to the people in the position trying to make these decisions. Okay, and I strongly encourage you to listen to them and to do your best to comply. Now, there is lots of food around to go for everybody. It does require that you share. Okay, you know, and what I mean by that is when you go to the grocery store, do not clean the shelves out so that you've got a pile up for, you know, 18 months. Okay, you don't require it. Things are changing, and like I said, things happen on a cycle. Now, I'm not saying everything's going to be over, but I did hear one scientist, one report, that they're expecting a year to 18 months to get this under wraps. That said, if you're if you're my age, I mean, in all fairness, I'm 50. I'll be 57 in a couple of months. Well, my birthday plans got tossed to pieces. Okay, I don't think that things will loosen up before May, although it would be nice. So, keeping this in mind, you'll notice I am not talking about medical procedures because, well, I don't have a medical background. Okay, but when it comes to the panic. Panic in a situation like this causes more problems and more complications for people than the illness ever does. Okay, so again, I do encourage you to follow what's in, to follow what the guidelines are saying. Okay, some people will tell you the government has to be trusted. You've got to listen. You've got to follow their guidelines. Other people say, don't listen to them. Talk to the people around you. They'll know what's going on. Well, here's the reality. Both have part of the answer. Now, myself, I trust my own instincts a lot more than I trust a whole lot of things. Of course, that's why I'm in the profession I'm in. Now, from your standpoint, whether you trust what they're saying or not, take it this way. Look at it as though they're doing the best they can with what they have. Okay, you elected them to run your country. I don't care what country you're in, because Lord knows, with YouTube, you get all over the place. Okay, it's all over the world, pretty much. It does not matter what country you're in. It does not matter what city you're in. It doesn't matter what nationality you are. And by the way, no matter your orientation, no matter your religious affiliation, the COVID-19 does not care one way or the other. It's targeting everybody. And I'll use the term targeting a little loosely. It's kind of like going the wind is targeting. The wind doesn't care either. It's going to go where it will. Ever try to convince a tornado that, oh, I've got a lot of money. I'm a politician of such and such a status. Therefore, leave me alone. Pay and see how well that works against against the tornado. It'll have about the same effect on the on the COVID nineteen virus. Now, to everybody out there, I cannot encourage you enough to buckle down, do what you're being guided to do, okay, and take into consideration. For those of you that are doing it, thank you very much. For those of you that are not. What's going to happen here is not only is the government going to step up and start putting stricter and stricter regulations in, and I do feel for them. Don't get me wrong, I don't agree with a lot of what people do, but I do feel for the governments that are being essentially forced to go in order to protect the majority of people. We have to put these guidelines in place, and if they're not being followed, because they're all we've got to work with, we have to put laws in place. If you don't want your freedoms and your and your liberties taken away, then follow the guidelines. Very important. Karmic law is real simple. Be true to yourself first. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. And energy out, energy in. Okay, now the societal law that apply that fits in there goes like this. 
you must follow the laws of the land in which you are, unless they unless they supersede or interfere with the first in the three karmic laws. At which point, understand, and this is a rather critical part of the whole thing. Forget belief structures. Whether you agree with something with the law or not, if you don't follow it, you are choosing to create a problem for yourself and potentially other people. Now, the only two things in this world that you have control over are what you think and what you do. And yes, what you say falls into what you do. Those are the only things you actually have a choice over. You know, that's all you can control. So I am asking you to please listen to what the, what, the, what the governments are saying and go, okay, this is what they're saying to protect you. You may not agree with it. You don't have to. Okay, there's always that neat little thing of choose not to and see what happens. That's usually a bad idea, by the way. It's kind of like choosing not to agree with gravity. You know, I don't believe it, so I'm going to step off the balcony. Well, this ends up working really poorly. So, with that in mind, this will come to an end. What I'm being, what I'm looking at, and I do not have the statistical background to give anything of this nature. Okay, this is just me on an instinctive level. Okay. But you're looking at about three months, at least, before the world gets into a rhythm. Now, the more you cooperate with each other, with the guidelines that are laid out for you, the quicker this may happen. No guarantees by anybody. Okay, the only thing in the world that is actually guaranteed is you will die at some point. Okay. How many times you die before that's a permanent thing is anybody's guess. God knows I've done it enough. But, <laughs> you know, but the reality of it is this. Um, the more you work together, the more you actually cooperate and be nice to each other, raising the vibration of the planet by helping each other out, by working with the guidelines that are out there, will help with controlling this virus and getting it under control so that the human immune system can and everybody else's immune system can actually kick into gear and start dealing with this. This is a new virus. It was, it was certainly going to happen. Let's, let's face it. The amount of forests, of ancient forests that have been being broken down, the amount of ice meltage, melting, that was a really poor word, the amount of ice that's melting, and thereby, and we're talking ancient ice, that is releasing new veri into the atmosphere and into the world in general. COVID-19 was bound to happen sooner or later, no matter who you point the finger at. And realistically, what difference does it make how it started? It's here. What does matter is how to contain it first that is what the governments and the scientists are looking at right now. Next is what to do with it. Okay, is how to stop it. Containment first, stop second. Okay, so work with them. Do your best. Now, I know in my house, and this is only in my house, I cannot say what anybody else is doing in theirs. Okay, we are sorting through things and what have you. We do try and keep things tidy. But where it comes to actually dealing with the potential complications, we are utilizing warm liquids. Fortunately, this works out well for me. I drink coffee. You know, coffee, tea, hot lemon drink, anything that puts a warm vapor and keeps, your, keeps the, the liquids running through your system does seem to help. Now, from my standpoint, I'm a firm believer in natural in natural remedies as well. Therefore, in my house, okay, we use eucalyptus oil. Now, in case you don't know, and check this for yourself, Vicks Vapor Rub and many of those medicated ointments work with eucalyptus. Okay. So and these are just things that I'm doing. Okay. Because of the fact that I live in an apartment, like many of you do. 
I do now carry a cloth with me because, quite frankly, not because I'm worried about it so much, but because my landlord actually made the comment that his boss is worried about it. So I carry cloth with me to handle door handles. Okay. It doesn't take a lot. It's not a major inconvenience. It fits in my pocket. Okay. So it really does boil down to, you know, down to an issue of working with each other and just doing that little extra. Not It's not a major investment in your time. Okay. Now, I could keep rambling on, which I probably did that for a little bit. But at this point, I'm going to bring this to a close for a little bit. Okay, I may address this again down the road, but for the moment, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Work with each other. Follow the guidelines to the best of your ability. Okay, if you don't do it for you, please do it for the people around you or the people that you don't know that are going to be affected if you don't do it. Okay, people are doing the best they can by working together, by talking together, we'll be able to get through this as a unit. Until we talk again, take care of yourselves, and please, for pity's sake, stay positive.